from your breaking news and weather authority. This is News 10 Today. He was an incredible athlete and a leader in a, in a lot of ways. He inspired a whole generation of young athletes. The basketball world mourning the loss of a legend, a helicopter crash killing nine people, including Kobe Bryant and his daughter yesterday in California. And this morning, mid-Michigan is paying their respects to the NBA great. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Barry Tryon. It is Monday, January 27th. Ida is off this morning, and we will have much more on that deadly chopper crash in just a moment. But first, we want to check in with Darren this morning. And it's <laughs> for a January uh, day in Michigan, it is really not that bad out there this morning. Uh, we're so Sitting right now in the low 30s and temperatures, they're not going to move a lot as we go throughout the day. Let's uh, take a look at our weather headlines. Some of us still a uh, flake or two of snow in the air, but that's fading away fast. Lots of clouds over the area once again today. And again, those temperatures just kind of linger in the 30s. Here is pinpoint Doppler radar and uh, some of us mainly south of Lansing. There's been some snow the past couple of hours. You can see that is fading away pretty fast. It's 32 right now in Lansing, Jackson 33. Lots of clouds for us today. There may be a little bit of fog around at times this morning. Notice the high temperatures. They're in the low to mid 30s, so not far from where we are right now. Out on the roadways this morning now. Most roadways are in pretty good shape, but with temperatures kind of hovering around freezing, we can't rule out a few little slick spots popping up, but uh, currently no issues being reported in and around the Lansing area. In Jackson, along I-94, outside of construction areas, moving along at 7 miles an hour. Thank you, Kobe! Thank you, Kobe! Well, you can see and hear there fans paying tribute to Kobe Bryant, the former Laker and five-time NBA champion. A helicopter crash killed him, his daughter, and seven others yesterday morning outside L.A. He was just 41 years old. And the shock and tributes to Bryant are pouring in all over, including right here in mid-Michigan at Michigan State. And that's where we find News 10 Spencer Soisher live for us this morning. Spencer. Well, Barrett, for lots of college students when they were growing up, Bryant was leading one of the most popular teams in the NBA to multiple titles. Last night, the green and white painted the rock here at MSU purple and gold. I'm going to step out of the frame here so you can get a better look at what they've done as a tribute to Kobe and his daughter Gianna. They were two of the nine that passed away when Bryant's helicopter crashed yesterday morning in Calabasas. Multiple reports say that Bryant and his daughter were on their way to one of her basketball games when the crash happened. Now only one of his four daughters was on board, but all nine passengers on the helicopter did not survive, according to officials. The news broke about half an hour before MSU's game at Minnesota yesterday, and after the game, Coach Tom Izzo said his players took it pretty hard. It's sad when a great guy has all the money in the world, everything in the world, and this is, my players were down when I told them after the game. I mean, it was like we didn't win anything, and uh, for a guy that they didn't even know to have that kind of impact, I think that speaks volume on who Kobe Bryant is. Former MSU players who would still be in school took to Twitter speaking out about Bryant's death. Former Spartan and now Charlotte Hornet Miles Bridges writing that he watched videos of Kobe before his games in high school and at MSU. And former Spartan big man Nick Ward posted a short clip of him with Bryant saying, go green, go white. And of course, Magic Johnson, famously of Lansing, spent much time with Bryant while he was with the Lakers, posted as well saying, we love you forever, number eight and number 24, the two numbers that Kobe wore during his career in the NBA. So just a sad day in the sports world. We're live at The Rock on MSU's campus. I'm Spencer Soiger for News 10. All right, Spencer, thank you. Well, our coverage continues throughout the morning and the Today Show. We'll have special coverage from Los Angeles this morning at 7 o'clock. You can also stay up to date on any developments with the WILX app and on the News 10 Facebook page. We're giving you a live look at how roads look as you head out the door this morning. Plus, Lansing Mayor Andy Shore delivers his state of the city, touching on everything from mental health care to roads. News 10 Today begins right now. From your breaking news and weather authority, this is News 10 Today. All right, taking a live look at the roads right now, our drive cam with our famous driver, Randy's out there northbound. It's the stash cam. We're it's just going to rename cam. it. We're we going to get a little it. bug ready for that. He's heading northbound <laughs> on Cedar out in Lansing right now. And, I mean, roads looking like this just about everywhere around yeah. Lansing this morning. Um, they're going to be slick. It's going to be a little bit of a dicey commute for you. So 
Give yourself plenty of extra time getting out the door this morning. Maybe uh, take that cup of coffee with you to go. <laughs> Thanks for being here on News 10 Today this morning. It is Thursday, February 6th. I'm Ida Tedesco. I'm Barry Trying. Glad to have you with us. Uh, we've been talking about the snow for the past couple days, and Darren, as we said, we were kind of right on the mark with it coming in overnight. So the big question is, are we going to get more of it? Uh, we are going to be dealing with light snow on and off today and tonight. So it's not a lot more in the way of accumulation. And really, we haven't seen a lot in the way of accumulation uh, during the night, but it's just the timing of it that you have some fresh snow as folks are heading off on their morning commute. Let's uh, take a look at our weather headlines. That light snow continues for us today. Daytime accumulations on top of what you already have should be around an inch or less. And highs today, they stay below freezing. We top out around 30. Here is pinpoint Doppler radar showing snow over a good portion of the area right now. You get uh, southeast of Jackson, there's even a little bit of freezing drizzle mixing in with some of the snowflakes. It is 22 right now in Lansing. Jackson 23. You can see the uh, light snow. It stretches back towards the Chicago area and will be pushing through mid Michigan today. So it is on and off snow showers for us today. Notice the predicted high temperatures upper 20s to around 30 across the area. Out on the roadways right now, we uh, check out time saver traffic. First of all, watch out for those salt trucks. They're out there giving plenty of room. On uh, I-96 at MLK, currently the traffic is moving at 62 miles per hour, so it's wet and some slick spots in the roads. Uh, we head into Jackson County. It's kind of a slow go on I-94 as well. Currently moving at under 60 miles per hour westbound 94. That is at Deering Road. Something tells me it's going to look a lot like that here in the next couple hours. Thanks, Darren. Well, all new this morning, results confirm that Pete Buttigieg and Senator Bernie Sanders are nearly tied following the Iowa caucus. The race still remains too early to call. Technical problems are still affecting reporting results. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden and Amy, Amy Klobuchar are still trailing along. We'll let you know when we learn more. Meanwhile, multiple reject the cover up protests springing up across the country yesterday following the impeachment trial. The Senate voted to acquit the president yesterday on both articles of impeachment. Large groups of protesters waved signs in D.C., Boston, Philadelphia, and even right here in Michigan. We'll have more on the Senate's decision coming up in our next half hour. Coming up on uh, 504 this morning and Mayor Andy Shore making roads a main talking point in last night's State of the City address. News 10's Rachel Sweet has more on his plan for Lansing. We want to keep fixing roads. During his State of the City address, Lansing Mayor Andy Shore noted some major road accomplishments over the course of 2019, including how the city has improved nearly 15 miles of roads and responded to over 2,000 pothole repairs. But Mayor Shore says the city can only do so much with the resources they have. We haven't reconstructed a whole lot of roads, but we've overlaid some to make them smooth. Um, it's not it's not a permanent fix. It's you know a seven or eight year fix instead of a 20 year fix, but we're still doing it. Mayor Shore also mentioning Governor Gretchen Whitmer's bond plans she introduced at the state of the state last week. He says while the legislature and the governor haven't figured out the details, the plan still won't do anything to help neighborhood roads. Continue to, to pothole repair and patch. Uh, we, we did a lot of sidewalk cuts and things, so we're doing a lot of work, but I just don't have the money or you know the ability right now to 100% to repair. The city's local road repairs would cost at least $300 million to complete. The mayor says the city only gets 10 or $11 million from the state, and he can't do it all without help. When the president came in, he offered up a billion-dollar infrastructure plan, and cities have seen not a penny. Um, so we're, we're still waiting, and we'll do what we can on our own to fix, but it would be great if the state and feds would, would help us out. So another main talking point, making sure mental health is a top priority in Lansing. News 10 Spencer Soisher is here now to explain how the city plans to address that. Well, there, the mayor announced last night that the city is going to create a mental health task force. The mayor says that mental health issues are having a significant impact in the city. Worst thing in the world is when you run into someone with mental health issues, we don't want to put them in jail. That doesn't make any sense. It's, it's not efficient for the taxpayers. It doesn't make sense for the person. We want to get them help, but you have to have systems and you have different groups that are doing things their own way. Um, and we want to put them all together at a table to understand each other's systems and figure out what solutions we can come up with. This all comes on the heels of Governor Whitmer signing a bill last month to create a 24-7 statewide mental health hotline. And while that program is expected to use state dollars, the city's task force is not expected to use significant resources. The mayor did say that state dollars could possibly be put into Lansing's mental health plan, though. All right, Spencer, thank you very much. Well, happening today, a charged former custodian for Holt Public Schools is back in court. 
Benjamin Barker is facing three felony counts of four-degree criminal sexual misconduct and one misdemeanor. He was found out of state and arrested by police last month. School superintendent says Barker resigned during the investigation. The charges involve either a current or former student from Holt High School. We'll let you know what happens. Well, that snow is falling. We'll give you another live look at the roads here coming up in just a minute. Plus, the happiest place on Earth expected to take a major hit from the deadly coronavirus. Details on that still ahead. Your breaking news and weather authority. This is News 10 Today. We start with breaking news this morning of reports of a possible shooting in Jackson. Our Spencer Soyser, the only reporter on scene, is there right now with everything we know so far. That's right, Ida. I'm outside of Duffy's Bar in Jackson on Waterloo Street where there was an apparent shooting this morning. We've received reports of that. Again, police are just now leaving this area, but we haven't had any confirmation yet of what exactly happened. I want to show you some video of what the scene looked like a little bit ago. You can see police had this area closed down as they investigated the scene. No word yet on who or how many people may have been injured. They did, however, tow a car out of the parking lot here, but right now police aren't saying a whole lot. We're working to find out exactly what happened here, and of course when we have that information we'll let you know on air and online. For now, reporting live in Jackson, I'm Spencer Soitcher for News 10. All right, thanks so much, Spencer. We're also working to find out what caused a fire at Woodland Lake Apartments on Dell Road. This happened around 12:15 this morning. Officials at the scene say no one was hurt and that officials were able to get that fire out fairly quickly. Now, of course, we will keep you updated as we learn more about both of these breaking stories, both on air and on the WILX News app. Well, good morning, everyone. A busy Friday, March 6th. I'm Ida Tedesco. And I'm Darren Rockhole. Thanks for joining us. Busy in news and a little bit busy. Well, I wouldn't say busy in weather, but a change, that's for the, sure. Well, you're going to notice a change when you step yeah. out this morning. First of all, you know, everything's kind of wet. Yeah. And there's some snowflakes in the air, yeah. too. And uh, temperatures aren't going to move a lot oh, today. Boy. That's what you want to hear, right? Yes. Uh, so some <laughs> scattered snow showers around this morning could still be even a few raindrops mixed with it. Shouldn't really cause any problems for us. Gusty winds today could be around 30, 35 miles per hour, and we do have near steady temperatures today in the 30s. Right now, Lansing 35, 34 in Jackson. It's snowflakes and or a few raindrops out there right now. These should all fade away by lunchtime today. So our forecast for today calling for a little bit of light precipitation this morning. It then turns windy for the afternoon. Notice the high temperatures today. A couple of degrees from where we are right now in the mid to upper 30s. Out on the roadways uh, this morning. Good news, no accidents currently being reported. Now you're going to find the pavement is wet right now, but with temperatures in some areas just kind of hovering around freezing, be alert. I mean, there might be a couple of slick spots that pop up, but none currently being reported to us. Moving along just fine, accident free on I-94 through Jackson County. All right, Darren, thank you so much. Well, Coscarella is out. School board voting unanimously not to renew Mark Coscarella's contract last night. Now it's looking to fill its top two positions. News 10 Cody Butler has all the details. Vote is eight to zero. Thank you. The resolution is adopted. The decision not to renew Mark Coscarella's contract came after a 20 minute closed door session. Lansing School Board President Gabriel Lawrence says even though Coscarella's contract isn't going to be renewed, he's still getting paid while on leave. We know we're confident in our investigators report and we, we know what the result will be of non-renewal of the contract. Lawrence says the reason Coscarella wasn't fired is because that would require another level of investigation that wouldn't be feasible. Coscarella's conduct initially came into question when Casey Sturley told News 10 in October Coscarella locked his classroom door, took off his clothes, and propositioned her while she was a student teacher at Holt Public Schools. When that story broke, Coscarella was the leading candidate to be Lansing's next superintendent. As the events unfolded, the board went with a nationwide search and is interviewing seven candidates next week. Lawrence is hoping the search process will move the district past the investigation. Uh, we really hope that, that these people who we're bringing in for interviews next week are not distracted by this, this huge distraction that this has become. Lawrence says whoever is named the next superintendent will decide who replaces Costarella. As far as the board is concerned, our executive team members are members of our family. That was Cody Butler reporting. Now, Costarella's contract ends June 30th. The board hopes to hire a superintendent by July 1st.
Well, happening today, local leaders and health officials in Lansing are coming together to discuss the coronavirus. News 10's Julie Williams is in the newsroom now with what to expect. Hey, Julie. Well, Ida, Lansing Mayor Andy Shore and Ingham County health officials will talk preparation and prevention. There have been 12 deaths in the U.S. from the coronavirus, and 11 of those are in Washington and one in California. There are more than 225 cases across the country, but there are no confirmed coronavirus cases here in Michigan. Governor Whitmer has created several task forces focused on stopping the spread of the coronavirus. Now, experts say the best way to prevent the spread, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and avoid touching your face. If you're sick, just stay home. Today's meeting in Lansing starts at 1. News 10 will be there. We'll let you know what happens. All right, Julie, thank you so much. Now, to learn more about what the state is doing to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, download our free WILX News app. And politics, and then there were two. The Democratic presidential candidates still in the running are making a break for Michigan before our state's primary Tuesday. Bernie Sanders will hold a rally tonight in Detroit and another one in Grand Rapids on Sunday. Joe Biden also reportedly making a stop in Gross Point Farms on Monday, then a public event in Detroit. Elizabeth Warren has canceled her visit to Lansing that was scheduled for tonight after announcing she is dropping out of the race. Now, we are less than a week away from Michigan's primary election. State officials are warning everyone election results will not be as fast as they normally are. And that's because of the surge of absentee ballots to say to seeing this election. As of today, more than half a million absentee ballots have already been cast. That's an 80% increase to 2016 primary election. State officials say an increase in absentee ballots means an increase in workload for clerks on election day. As state and city, city officials prepare for Tuesday's increased workload, they're also looking ahead as to how to beat up the process in November. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson calling on the Michigan legislature to change the law to allow clerks to assemble absentee ballots 75 days before the election, rather than 60 days. But I'm hopeful that, that Tuesday will show even more why that additional time is uh, necessary for moving forward uh, with our elections and, and, and frankly, the national spotlight that will be on our state throughout the year. Now Benson did not give an exact time or estimate as to how much longer it'll take to get Tuesday's results, but she says we should expect to see them by Wednesday. Victims of alleged sexual abuse under the hands of a former U of M doctor demanding an investigation. Plus the end of an era. Furniture powerhouse art van closing its doors after 50 plus years in business.